guys, how is it going? Welcome back to another video by myself, Beach ASMR. In today's video, I have got a selection of most of my guitar pedals and I thought I would show you them. Um, talk a little bit about what they do, what I use them for, and I've got the mic up by me and I might even do some tapping up near the mic and we can kind of see how they sound. Um, they're not in any particular order, but I think I'm going to start with I'm going to call this one maybe the most essential, but definitely probably the least interesting out of all my pedals, but this is kind of the first thing that I would put in a pedal board. This is, yeah, probably the most important thing in my opinion in my pedal board. And this is my tuning pedal. It is a Tundra by Sub-Zero. Um, there's not a lot to it, it's really small, which I like about this, because it takes up very little space in my pedal board. This has been part of my setup for a good few years now, and it's got a lot of really great little features that just make it a really effective pedal. As you can see, it takes up a minimal amount of space, being what we call a micro pedal. It has one foot switch for on and off. When I press it down, it also stops any more signal being outputted, so it silences the guitar while I'm tuning. I can pitch or flat. I don't ever touch these buttons, to be honest. Um, and I just use it all the time. Every single gig, any practice, I use this pedal to tune up. It's also got some other handy features, like this rubber matting on the bottom that helps prevent any slippage. It takes a 9 volt current just like any other pedal normally does. And that's the Sub Zero Tundra. I really like how this pedal is pretty much all black. It has a really slick look to it. You know, it's there to do its job. It's inconspicuous, it's smart, it's sleek, it's efficient. I've never had any problems with it. I have nothing bad to say about this pedal. I think I picked it up off Facebook Marketplace or Gear for Music or something for like less than 15 pounds, maybe four years ago. And it's just always done the job since. So if you're looking for a tuning pedal, I'd really recommend giving this one a go because it's done me amazing for a very good price point. It's really done a great job. You might want to think about the Sub-Zero Tundra since the first pedal that I would put on my board and the first pedal I've got to show you today. Let's see what it sounds like in the mic. Some quite nice tapping sounds, I might try that for my next assortment. But that's the first pedal, I'm just going to put that up here. The second pedal I have to show you is actually the very first pedal I ever purchased. And it is this. A bad monkey from Digitech. This is a tube overdrive. Now, 
those of you in the guitar community might know a little bit about the Bad Monkey. It has become, or rather, it has gained a little bit of a cult status. And I think it was maybe last year, a couple years ago, this was selling on eBay for really quite a high price because it got it almost went viral within the guitar community so I bought this I want to say again it was like 15 pounds um I only got this because for a guitar exam I used to do like rock school when I was in school and my teacher said you should really think about investing in a in an overdrive pedal it'll really help he said you know if you've got the income this would really help and be a great step for you as a guitarist and i went online and i just bought the cheapest tube overdrive i could find and it was this one and i paid something like 20 quid including shipping for it um for just what has again been a total workhorse um there's not many bells and whistles on this. It's a very solid, solid feeling pedal. With a really great foot switch on it. With a really great foot switch. And it is a tube overdrive, so it just adds that little bit of oomph. Not necessarily like a distortion, but it'll give you that extra gain, that level just add a nice subtle bit of grit to your tone which is what I've used it a lot for I use it often to supplement um, a distortion pedal which I'm not going to show you today but this is the bad monkey this is my first pedal I have a lot of great memories gigging with this and for a long time the only pedal that I owned was the bad monkey and then I used to gig in an indie band and my setup was literally these two pedals for a good couple years and they just did all that I really needed to do. So, you know, shout out to these guys getting me through a lot of my teen gigging years, but the Bad Monkey especially holds a special place in my heart and if the prices have come down on eBay, don't be paying £50 plus for one, they're not worth it. But if you do see a chance to pick one up, I'd highly recommend it because this is a really great piece of kit. Again, it's got some similar features, like the rubber matting on the bottom. And I believe that this is a 9 volt output as well. Yeah, 9 volt. It also, really interestingly, has two different outputs. So if you need two different outputs, you can use it for that. But I often only use the one. But just if you need it, it's a great little extra bonus. There's the bad monkey. So, from the oldest pedal in my setup to... This is the newest to me. It's not the newest, but it's the newest to me. This is the Micro Qtron from Electro Harmonics. Now this is a really funky pedal. And this is probably the first pedal that I purchased for myself that I didn't really feel like I needed it. But this was definitely a want. So, oh, it's a bit down the back. I bought this off a friend who was selling it. And what this basically does is it is a filter. So there's three modes of high pass, band pass, and low pass. And got the Q and the drive and it. I can't explain this effect really other than it has a womp womp sound. It just makes it go womp 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 womp. But not like a wild pedal, it's kind of different. This is, for the size of it, a surprisingly light pedal. I would say it's a fair chunk lighter 
than the bad monkey, even though it is wider and a little bit longer. It's also all metal, all metal, apart from these four very dirty, these four very dirty rubber feet on the bottom. My friend only sold this to me as I think he was upgrading from the micro to the fuel. q it's an envelope follower, envelope follower. I suspect this might make some really nice tapping sounds, so I'm going to hold it up to the mic. So there you have it, that's pedal number three, the Micro Qtron Envelope Follower. I haven't kicked with this one too much, but it's a good bit of fun to use when you're practicing. It's not necessarily the most practical, but it's a good bit of fun, definitely a good bit of fun. The next... Hmm. Yeah, I'll go for this one next, I'll show you my other micro pedal next. This one you will have seen in my first video. This is the Tiny Spring Reverb from Tone City. This is another micro pedal and it has a real weight to it, I would say. The Tone City has maybe, they're probably about the same weight as a Qtron, but then look at the difference in size. It's crazy. This again is just a bit of a workhorse. It does the job. A more recent edition. One of the newer pedals in my board. But again, it gets a lot of love and a lot of use. It's maybe the fourth, I'd say the fourth pedal that I would put on my board. Um, just the style that I'd, I've kicked before and played. And it's a good, it's a good bit of kit. There's not a lot to work with. It's a real simple, dry, wet kind of mix. Not even got any rubbering on the bottom, but you know it does the job and it sounds good. I really like. It. There's a slight sparkle on this. I think it's just a decal or something. Oh no, it's the whole metal. And this slots nicely on the board. Honestly, the Tone City pedals that I've used in the past, they just, I cannot fault them on the build quality. They are really solid, in my opinion. Really, really solid. Again, another 9 volt. That's the Tone City Tiny Spring Reverb that you've seen now a couple of times on this channel. I'm going to start a new row, put this one down here. Okay, so the next one I'm going to show you isn't actually on my paddleboard anymore, but for a very good reason. So this is the Bellcat Analog Chorus. It is what it says on the tin, it's just a really basic analog chorus pedal. It has a rate switch and a depth switch. I like that these switches both light up. Same with this one from Tone City. They light up so you can see them as you turn them, which is cool. This is a definitely a lighter pedal. It's a really cool light kind of turquoisey blue color. A teal? Is it teal? I'm not going to say that with confidence because I'm not sure. And it also features four rubber feet to stop it from slipping, which is really great. I bought this for myself as I wanted a chorus pedal as I was really starting to um, upgrade my board. I had been saving money from my weekend job that I had as a teenager and this is something that I 
saved up for I wanted it, saved for it, got it kicked with it it's done well it's a good bit of fun um, really great to record with and I've recorded a few bits and pieces, uni projects and stuff with this pedal and it's done really well just another solid budget pedal, a lot of these pedals are budget, I'm going to be honest they are pretty much all budget pedals apart from maybe the tiny spring was a little bit more but the analog definitely was the final pedal uh, I've got to show you and this one is a little bit interesting is this Juno 60 chorus emulator from TC Electronic and I just think that this thing is beautiful I have used it an absolute bucket load and even though it is definitely something that's maybe a little bit flashy and maybe seen as being a bit gimmicky by some I found this to be my favourite pedal that I use that I'm going to show you today this is the reason that the Bellcat is not on my board because I use this um, so my first instrument actually isn't guitar, it's keys um, it's what I studied at university I was in piano lessons growing up and my passion in music really comes from playing keyboards I've got a synthesizer just to the side of me um, and so when I saw this a Juno 60 emulator I was like oh my god I want that um, and it was given to me as a gift for my 21st by someone very special to me and it has been used relentlessly ever since because it is just such a cool piece of equipment um, I use it gigging I also love to use it when recording so if I'm recording in any keys parts um, it's really great to stick on um, in the chain for that it sounds really really cool this has a few different features which have quite a few different chorus sounds so even though there's no knobs to edit the sounds really specifically these features I think are more than enough it features a mono and a stereo chorus switch and by pushing on these different switches there are three different presets you can have just number one one and two or just number two at the top here we have a true bypass this is probably the only thing that I would change about this pedal because the true bypass is at the top and I don't think it was necessarily designed as being uh, I don't think this was necessarily designed as being a guitar pedal but more a keys pedal this gets in the way when you're trying to step on these two this can really get in the way if you're not being careful so there's definitely been a couple times where in a show I've accidentally stepped on this instead of one of these two and I've just killed my entire signal train and I've just silenced my guitar when I'm actually trying to put a chorus on and you have that mad rush of trying to sort everything out so maybe that's the only thing I would change I would get rid of this or maybe swap around the positions of these because the sounds that come out are incredible that's a really really solid build and I love the wood panelling on the side with these retro looking buttons that look just like the Juno 60 I'd say Juno is probably a dream piece of equipment I would love to get a Juno and that's not going to happen for a good little while Maybe it'll be something when I retire, I can go and get loads of really geeky keyboard stuff. But right now, I'm going to stick with the emulator, the chorus emulator. Let's have a little bit of a top and see what sounds I can get out of this.
So there are some of the pedals, six pedals, that I have in my collection. Some of them I very much use a lot. Some of them maybe are just for a bit of fun, but I hope you enjoyed. If you have any questions about my pedals or any other gear that I might use, feel free to ask in the comments and I'll happily do my best to answer. Thank you so much for watching and I really hope you have a lovely rest of your night.